Well, welcome everybody to the 2023 Fall Athletic Assembly. This is the first of our three athletic assemblies and the first time for many of you to be sitting in this crowd. Tonight we're here to celebrate all of you in this room. Shortly, you'll hear from your coaches. As well, some of you in this room will receive individual awards. Regardless, all of you should be proud of the seasons you had and the memories you created this fall. It's been a great fall for so many reasons. We had record numbers in our soccer programs. All five soccer teams had 18 plus players. Our ultimate Frisbee team won the league playoffs for the first time and cross country running had a runner qualify and compete in the provincials. All five soccer teams made the playoffs. Four of the five made the finals and our junior boys brought home the playoff banner. It's been a lot of fun watching all of you compete on campus, following the seniors teams to uh, soccer teams to case it's clear some amazing memories have been made this fall. Compared to the teams we compete against, we are small in numbers, but so big in might. A sincere congratulations to all of you on your successful fall seasons. <laughs> on behalf of all of us in this room, I'd like to give a big thank you to several special people. This long list of de dedicated people is the reason sports at Stansted are so great. First of all, I'll thank all of you. As you know, as I know, you will give your full focus to the assembly. Thank you in advance for the respect that you will show to every single speaker and every single team. And finally, hopefully you didn't bring them, but if you did, please turn off your phones. Thank you to Ms. Sonia Perron, Mr. Maxime Boulet, Mrs. Holly Moore in the Wellness Center, and to our athletic therapist, Mr. Christophe Rob Lavoie. Thank you to Ms. Scrabby and Ms. Gagnon for coaching the beach volleyball gang. Thank you to Ms. Nikki Campbell for running outdoor pursuits. Thank you to Ms. Ali Fraser for managing the record-breaking group of students in fall badminton. Thank you to the maintenance department, the ladies in laundry, the team at the arena, our drivers, and our kitchen staff who all work tirelessly to make sure we have everything we need. Every person mentioned are truly the backbone of the sports programs here at Stansted College. This dedicated group go at the extra mile every time for you because they care about you. Thank you to Mrs. Wolf for all her help preparing these events and for doing such a great job with running the RCQ component of the athletics program. And thank you to Daniel Bovert in the athletics store. Danielle has been a wonderful addition to the athletic team and really cares about the college, its coaches, and its students. Thank you. And finally, a huge, huge thank you to your coaches. They work hard to ensure your athletic experience is, a memorable, is as memorable as possible. Your coaches will say nice things about you tonight, but I hope you take the time to pull them aside and let them know how much they mean to you. As you can see, I'm wearing my majoress sweater. I don't wear it often, but tonight marks 25 years from when I won my fall majoress for football. And now I know I'm the guy who trips over soccer balls there was a time. There was a time. <laughs> so I'm going to take a minute to share some of what I've learned in 25 years. Create memories. Talk to your friends. Put away your phones. Cherish it. Embrace it. And be present in this journey you're embarking on athletically, socially, and academically in 2023-24. Finally, Thanks to my coaches, Mr. Samard, Mr. Van Dyke, Mr. Marino, Mr. Chandler. You did so much to make me who I am today. Thank you. And so, without further ado, let's kick things off with Junior Girls Soccer and Mr. Peasley. Thank you. So, first of all, good evening, everyone. And I want to start by thanking my co-coach that was on the team this year, Ms. Guerrera. I was incredibly pleased to have her join me and to join our team. And I know the girls appreciated her incredible energy that she brings to the field and, of course, her vast knowledge of the game. The season simply would not have been the same without her. Thanks, coach. Thank 
so at the start of this season, we really had no idea what to expect from this team. Uh, everyone who had been on my team last year was either gone, done with soccer, or moving up to the senior team. Uh, luckily, we had a great turnout for tryouts, and we had a lot of new faces. So we had to start by making a few cuts, but still making uh, a very full team with 22 players, which meant four girls had to sit and not even dress uh, for the game, uh, for every one of our games. Coach Carrera and I talked about it right at the start and decided to share all the missed games between the girls and get everyone as much playing time as we could because we really wanted to focus on player development. And to be honest, this is largely because during the tryouts, we could see there was a definite need for uh, some development. So we ended up with half the team being junior age, half being bantam age. But what we liked about the team was that even though they needed some skills work, they made a solid effort in practice, they paid attention most of the time during drills, and lo and behold, they began showing improvement. Where in our first couple of games, we would see girls put their head down and try to run through three defenders instead of passing the ball to an open winger, they started moving the ball, they started communicating, and they started using the full field. We saw passing get crisper, running with the ball get smoother, and this led us to getting our first win of the year against the Purple School down the street. Throughout the season, we kept handling the ball better, maintaining possession, and really working as a team. It got us into the playoffs against Galt, where our season unfortunately ended, but some of the memories from the season will continue on. I think the first memory was when Coach Guerrero and I were at tryouts, and we saw a girl willingly stand in net, willingly dive to the ground to make a save in the tryout, and I said right away that it looked like we had a goalie. Any player willing to get mud stains on the knees of her leggings is made to be a goalie. And Maria definitely was that. We had Clara willing to attack any ball and doing it well. We had Tony being a wall down the center of our defense. We had Jane cheering louder than anyone. We had Julia playing hard through injury. And we even had a hospital visit together. Uh, we had Miriam and Juliet working the ball back and forth on attack. We had Danny taking great free kicks. We had Katie running hard despite constant pain in her foot. We had Caitlin uh, W. never going home with her parents so that she could get McDonald's with us. Um, <laughs> we had Ebony and Chi Chi scouting out the local Dollaramas wherever we stopped. We had Zoe getting much better this year at avoiding handballs. Thank you, Zoe. We had Caitlin Bell being an imposing force against other teams. We had Kira staying behind to practice shooting on so many days. We had Miranda showing how happy she was every time she had to run more laps. Uh, we had Alexa getting her passing working by the end of the season. Begonia's penalty kick straight at the goalie, bouncing straight back to Begonia, and she can tell you the rest. We had Sarah leading the cheer, and I never honestly knew that she could be that loud. Uh, we had Camilla and Maka running hard as our secondary strikers, and Last but not least, we had Jane uh, running like a gazelle after the ball, and that comparison came from Coach Carrera. All in all, it was a very fun, very enjoyable season for us as your coaches, and we look forward to more memories and, of course, more laps of the field for those of you returning next year. And now for the award winners. So I will announce uh, Junior S winners as well as the Sportsmanship Award. So please hold your applause till the end. And I would ask all five girls to come up together at the end to receive their awards. The first Junior S goes to a girl who played wherever we needed her. She played each position with skill, with effort, and with success. She seemingly never runs out of energy and plays the game at full speed whenever the ball is anywhere near her. She scored most of our goals, including our first goal of the year, which I am sure she planned to bounce off the post, bounce off the goalie, and go into the net. So congratulations to Caitlin Wonka. The second junior S goes to one of our core defensive players. She was always aggressive, challenging any high balls coming in, and she played with a strong physical presence at all times. Her ability to clear the ball away from the center saved us time after time, and we are both very pleased to award a junior S to Clara Buck Thompson. The next junior S goes to one of our new players on the team. 
We could see in tryouts that she knew how to handle the ball, and she had a great kick, but she, shoot, sorry, she soon showed her skill at center midfield. She has a great sense of how to play defensively, but also excels at finding openings to move the ball upfield. The flow of the game changed whenever she was on the bench. To the anchor of our midfield, we're happy to award a junior S to Begonia Gonzalez. And the final junior S goes to another of our solid defenders who was basically a wall for us on defense. She challenged anyone who came near her, and the great left-footed kicks made her a valuable addition down our left side, along with her signature deke around a player before sending the ball downfield. And we're very happy to award a junior S to Danny Tornberg. <laughs> and finally, the Sportsmanship Award. The award goes to Jane Rohde. From our first practice onwards, you could see just how happy Jane was to be on the field each and every day. She put in a full effort at all times. Most do this when they play, but Jane kept it up even when on the sidelines, cheering loudly for her team and just being a positive presence around the team at all times. It really was a pleasure having her on the team this year. Would all of you please come up to get your awards? Oh, that's Jane. Yep. That's Jane. And Jane? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next to speak from Bantam Boys Soccer, Miss Borsoy. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I see you. Good evening. To begin, I want to thank you know Mr. Spurk, the Wellness Center, the drivers, Mr. Danielle, and a special thanks to uh, the other Coach K for babysitting the boys on the way back to the finals. I know it was pretty hard. They get pretty rowdy in the bus. Um, this season, the Bantam boys team had a 19-man roster. That's 19 Bugby boys running around, causing a ruckus wherever they went, especially on the field. I, re I might remember the season a little different from all of you, but there are a few moments I will not forget. The first goal of the season that came from a corner kick that went right to Carlos's head, right in the net. It was like, you can't make that up. Jose scoring the tying goal against Massey Vanier in our last game with only minutes left in the game, which led us to, you know, come second in the, in the league. Senna pulling out defensive moves that I definitely did not teach him, but he did them every game. And then Bryson, gearing up for the final minutes of the season and making his first save. <sighs> and certainly the bus rides in the 21 passenger bus. It's a little chaotic. There's 20 of us. You guys always wanted to sit beside me. It's just, no, thank you. Like, no, thank you. Um, although we had our success, Galt was a challenge that we struggled with. However, the second time we faced them, a lesson was learned. We were down with little hope in sight. As a team, you guys regrouped during the second half. You all dug deep and you played with them for the remaining 35 minutes. That's what it's about. The score didn't matter at that point because you boys never gave up. And it might not seem like it, but that's what improving and getting better looks like. 
There are only three things that I want you all to take away from this season. To always have fun, to never give up, and most importantly, yes, we are always going to McDonald's. Now, for the awards, I will be giving three Bantam S's and a Sportsmanship Award. Please come up all together at the end, and you guys can hold the applause, please. The first Bantam S recipient had a relentless work ethic throughout the season. His natural defensive instincts were what made him such a great center back. Ben Magna rarely stepped off the field, and for a good reason. He kept the boys in line on and off the pitch. Although a force on the back line, he took charge and netted a few as well. He is a defensive rock and a player I could depend on every game. The next Bantam S recipient was willing and understanding to play any position. Holden Smiths has an exceptional speed and can rapidly cover ground both with and without the ball. He has a knack for scoring goals and creating scoring opportunities for his teammates. His versatility and aggressive play were his biggest strengths. His presence on the field was always felt by his opposing teams. He's definitely a player you do not want to play against, but rather always have on your team. Lastly, this player started off the season with an injury, which is never easy. Yet, he, this did not break the spirits of Ben Ryu. He remained positive and was always ready to cheer on the team. Once he was able to play, I could always count on him to leave it all on the pitch. One thing that makes a great player is the ability to help others succeed. Ben cared about the game, but more importantly, cared about the team getting better each day. He captained the team this season and spread his never give up attitude to the whole team. For these reasons, Ben Ryu was awarded a Ban MS and the Sportsmanship Award. Please all come up. Our next program to be recognized, Junior Boys Soccer, Mr. Liverpool. Good evening, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, coaches, and most importantly, the incredible Stansted College Junior Boys Soccer team. Today we gather here to celebrate uh, not just a season of soccer, but a season of growth, unity, and undeniable championship glory. This year has been an incredible journey, and I couldn't be prouder of each and every one of you for your unwavering dedication and determination. From the first day we stepped onto the pitch, I had suspicions that this year could be something special. We knew that it would take hard work, commitment, and resilience to reach the pinnacle of success. This championship, however, isn't just about the shiny trophy or the accolades that accompany it. It's more about the countless hours of practice, the tedious two-man passing drills, and the numerous push-ups that we encountered for rocketing shots over the net. It's about the unbreakable bond that we forged as a team. It's about the lessons we've learned on and off the field. The growth that we've experienced as individuals and the incredible journey we embarked upon together. We faced formidable opponents, but we never wavered. We believed in ourselves, in our abilities, and in each other. We knew that success would only come through teamwork, resilience, and a relentless spirit. And that's exactly what we displayed every time we took to the pitch. We've celebrated together and we've faced challenges together. We've shown sportsmanship and respect to our opponents and we've embraced the true spirit of this 
beautiful game. And for those of you who don't know me that well, um, I probably wouldn't have said that about five years ago about this game of soccer. I was kind of forced into coaching, um, but I have grown to uh, love the game and love the young men that I work with. So um, that's a little bit of an aside, I guess. Um, the way that we conducted ourselves throughout this season speaks volumes, I think, about the character that we had on this team. Um, to the parents and the families who have stood by us, because there were a few that traveled to um, all of our games, road and home, um, and they're cheering us on and providing us uh, unwavering support. Thank you for being our, our biggest fans and for being part of this incredible journey with us. But most importantly, I want to commend each and every player on this team. You've all contributed in your unique ways, and together we've created a legacy, I think, I hope, that will um, not soon be forgotten here uh, at Stansted College. One thing I would like you to remember is that a team is not just about the players on the field, it's about every single person who wears the school colors and who represents the values that we present. Let's continue to be champions, gentlemen, okay? Not only on the soccer field, but also in our lives. Let's carry the lessons we've learned, the friendships we've forged, and the values we've upheld, carry them on into the future. Congratulations, Stansley College Junior Boys Soccer Team on an outstanding championship winning season. Thank you for being this confident. I guess that's the old uh, hook, you know, the sign where they tell you you've been on too long. Um, I can't wait to see uh, what the future holds for all of us, or for all of you. Go Spartans. Um, as was alluded to earlier, our, our soccer programs are clearly in, in very, very healthy. Um, we had 32 kids come out. Uh, for the junior boys soccer program. Sadly, we had to make a few cuts, obviously. Um, we ended up carrying 24 players. Uh, I say that only to justify the fact that I have uh, six junior S's uh, and one sportsmanship award. Yeah, six, but on a team of 24, it's not that bad. Um, aptly, na aptly named The Rock, this defender did not body slam anyone or deliver skull-crushing headbutts. No, instead he delivered precision passes and booming clearing kicks from our back line. A rock solid defender, Alejandro was instrumental in our soccer team's league and playoff championship victories. His exceptional defensive skills, including precision tackles and unyielding resolve, were key in keeping our opposition at bay. Alejandro's leadership qualities were equally impressive, um, inspiring his teammates to play their best and maintain a strong team spirit. For these reasons, Alejandro Ruelas is awarded a Junior S. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just go through all five and then we can uh, applaud at the end. So if you'd hold your applause to the end, please. Thank you. Uh, most recently named uh, by me, uh, the midfield maestro, um, Patricio Orpeza, showcased exceptional vision and creativity throughout the season. His pinpoint passes and his ability to control the tempo of the game were crucial to our team's success. Pato's leadership extended beyond the field as he served as a captain, motivating and uniting his teammates and making them into, uh, excuse me, making him a standout player and leader uh, during our championship campaign. For those reasons, uh, Patricio Oropesa is awarded a junior S. Uh, Gabriel Poitras' goal-stopping prowess played a pivotal role in our success. His clinical attitude and his impressive ability to deny scoring opportunities often left opponents in awe. Gabriel's leadership skills did not go unnoticed and were clearly on display as he led our team's last line of defense and inspired his teammates to reach their full potential as well. So for those reasons, Gabriel Poitra is awarded a junior S. Um, it was quite evident from the, uh, from the first day of practice that this young man ha had played a little bit of soccer before he arrived at Stansted College. Uh, in fact, it could be probably said 
that he had one of the highest uh, keeper IQs I think that I've seen in a first year player um, here at the college at the junior level. Um, the defensive wall, Pablo Fernandez was the backbone of our soccer team's championship success as a leader uh, and a resolute goalkeeper. Uh, his extraordinary shot stopping abilities and, and uh, commanding presence in the penalty box were instrumental in securing crucial victories. Uh, for, this, for these reasons and others, but for these reasons mainly, Pablo Fernandez is awarded a junior S. Max Shepard's versatility and ability to excel in multiple positions made him an invaluable asset to our high school soccer team's championship season. Whether playing as a midfielder, forward, or defender, his, his uh, ad adaptability and skill set helped raise the level of play for the entire team. Max's leadership qualities and unwavering dedication to the game set him apart as a powerful, as a pivotal player uh, this season. For these reasons, uh, Max Shepard is rewarded a junior S. The last junior S team captain, uh, Liam Ryan, his exemplary leadership skills were a driving force behind our soccer teams uh, and playoff championship victories. Not only was he a formidable forward, but his motivational speeches and unwavering support for his teammates were equally crucial. Liam's ability to lead by example and inspire unity within the team <clears throat> marked him as a standout player and a leader. And the very last award uh, that I will give out tonight is our sportsmanship award. Um, in a world where sportsmanship is a true, nature, a true measure of one's character, uh, Sean Ruguiza's actions and attitude I, I thought we might get that reaction, uh, have left an indelible mark on me and, and all who have had the privilege of witnessing his exemplary behavior. Now, those of you I'm sure you know Sean, um, while his playful nature had to be kept in check at times, um, his dedication to the principles of sportsmanship, uh, they make him uh, a deserving recipient of this award. Hopefully his legacy will continue to inspire future generations of San State College athletes to compete with integrity and respect. Um, obviously something that my boys know uh, is a big thing for me. Uh, congratulations, Sean, uh, on your well-deserved recognition as a Junior Boys Soccer Sportsmanship Award winner. Uh, the next program is the first program of the night that can give out a Major S Award. At these assemblies, we recognize Major S Award winners with a standing ovation. Our next program to be recognized is Ultimate Frisbee, Mr. Carruthers. <laughs> oh boy. There we go. Okay, I really want to bring your attention really quick to what's hanging on the wall there, okay? Wow, absolutely incredible, okay? What a season. In fact, there is no doubt in my mind that this season will be forever remembered as the time and year that Stansted College Ultimate Frisbee officially took its first steps and showed the rest of the RSEQ what it means to be a Spartan. Right? Stansted College is actually where I learned how to play Ultimate too. So when I heard 
the possibility of it not being offered, I jumped headfirst at the opportunity to coach with no previous coaching experience. <laughs> that approach of uh, jumping in headfirst at everything seemed to kind of follow our season. From showing up to first practice and having 58 tryouts with only three Frisbees to spending an entire week prepping for our first weekend tournament, Jamboree, and showing up to find out it's a five verse five, not seven verse seven. Whew. The season had a bumpy start, but as we started to develop our handling skills and become comfortable throwing at further distances, we became a fierce opponent for every other team. Watching every single one of you throughout this season learn, learn to work together and become more than just a team reminded me of my time here. The weird, wacky things that happen while we're traveling, playing, and just practicing is what makes our team our team. Things like Augie always being so proud of managing to beat the system at McDonald's and paying $15 exactly for a meal that actually costs $15.03. Or Braden and Parker being the first person, the first two on the field and the last two off the field and somehow competing on it every single time. Seeing how... Uh, Seeing who could throw the farthest or deciding to break reality with a new throw that shouldn't work, right? <laughs> Noah Haddad, finding 101 questions to ask. Like if practice is almost over five minutes before it starts. <laughs> or Corey and Elijah, I dubbed them the twins. I don't think I've ever seen the two of them apart, and so thank God that you guys always wore different colored hats. <laughs> or when Raya threw a small hammer throw and scored one of our few points on our last final game against Jean Rambeau, winning the entire team donuts. <laughs> See, those moments are what make a team so strong and so great. So I have three senior S's to award. But first, let me just explain what an MVP is, the most valuable player. See, in Ultimate, it is an, it's an award that's awarded to a boy and girl on the opposing team at the end of every game. It's awarded to players who not only demonstrate great skill and a strong understanding of the game, but also exhibit out outstanding sportsmanship and a positive attitude towards the other team. Across the season, Brody Malloy and Zoe Charland. Overall, you guys received the most MVPs. You both have demonstrated incredible talent, as well as exceptional camaraderie among your peers and I hope to see you both continue the sport. Reliability is a very powerful trait to have in a sport. Being able to take control of a situation, take the, first, take the time to find that open player and deliver a consistent, well-placed pass takes time to develop. Parker, you were able to do this right away. From taking on one of the roles as captain to just deciding to create a new throw over lunch, I can't wait to see what you come up with next. And finally, it's a lot to be informed you won't be able to play your final season because of your age. But it takes serious strength and courage to continue playing the sport as a team's manager. Tyler Bada, you impressed me. <laughs> you
You impressed me every step of the way. From your maturity, your dedication, and willingness to help others. You may have held the title of manager, but you were most definitely my assistant coach. Congratulations on receiving the Sportsmanship Award. I want to really quickly thank you all again for putting your heart and soul into this sport and into this season. I'm not only proud <laughs> to be your coach, <laughs> but I'm honored <laughs> to now stand here and celebrate one more time with you all. Please help me give a warm round of applause to our awardees. Next program to be recognized is the first program of the night that can give out not only Major S awards, but MVP trophies as well. Just like Major S winners, we recognize MVP, MVP trophies with a standing ovation. Next program to be recognized, cross-country running Mr. DeLorme. Yeah, that's not going to go to my head. <laughs> cross country. Training for cross country in the fall term after a summer off is, well, an extremely difficult thing to do. Getting your body ready to handle the stresses that a five kilometer run will put on it is difficult. Doing that in approximately three weeks is practically unheard of outside of school sports. Being a natural athlete can help lessen the burdens and the damage done to your body, but the training is still intense. You can ask any of the runners on our team, the first few weeks are probably the hardest. It's not fun. If you do not take care of yourself before and after practice, your body will give out on you. With that being said, I want to thank Christoph and the entire Wellness Center team for continuously making sure that our runners were properly put together and helping them get ready for races. We managed to make it through the season, for the most part, without injuries. Now, Hubert jumping off his bed and breaking his leg the night we came back from our final race was perfect timing, so thank you for that. Before celebrating our runners with awards tonight, I want to take a few moments to share some of the highlights of our season. I also want to thank Ms. Reynolds for constantly referring to me as her co-coach when we all know that I'm just the assistant coach here to tell you to run faster. Speaking of Ms. Reynolds, I have to mention one other thing. At our home race, I was talking to one of our runners about when I was in high school, and they asked me if I had run cross country when I was in high school. So my natural response to that is, and it's okay when I say it, is do I look like I run? But without missing a beat, she jumps in there and says, does he look like he was an athlete? One thing that people often misunderstand about cross-country running is that it is both an individual sport and a team sport. Every runner on our team works hard to get their best individual time, all while also getting the, possible, the best possible result for the team. Runners are leveled by age and gender, and the top seven runners for each level earn points for the team. 
The higher you place, the more points you earn. And the object of the season is quite simple. At the end of the fourth and final race, you want to be the team with the most points. Our team this year was composed of 18 runners, 14 of which competing at the senior level. This meant that we knew we were going to have to clean up at the senior level to have a chance of winning it all. The lead up to that first race is always interesting. Our returning runners know what to expect. They know what races are going to be like. They know how to plan. Everything is familiar. Our less than experienced runners are typically either overconfident or living in some form of la-la land thinking that all is going to be fine. This year our first race sees us going to Galt. Anyone who has run that Galt race in the past will tell you that it is a monster. Not only is the course tricky, but someone decided it would be a fun thing to end a race with an actual physical close to 90 degree wall to approach your finish line. Thankfully, Mother Nature decided to have our backs this season and it rained for two or three days prior to the race and that massive wall was no longer part of our race. Every single one of our runners beat their practice times and nine out of our runners earned points for our team. Andrew was also able to FaceTime his sister Vivian while on his race. So, you know, overall, a pretty good start. The second race of the year is our home race. This is where home course advantage comes in, if there's such a thing as cross-country running. Some will tell you that the Stansted race is one of the hardest, mainly because it's a little longer than it's supposed to be, but that can stay between us. Again, nine of our runners earn points. The only difference here between the first and the second is that Andrew was not with us, thus we missed out on the opportunity to say hi once again to Vivian. Third race takes us to Massevanier. Massevanier is always the race everyone looks forward to. It's the easiest of the races, doesn't have very many hills, and at this point everyone's got a couple races under their belt and they know what to expect. You'll have heard this before, but nine of our runners earned points for the team. Oh, and rest assured, Andrew was back and on his FaceTime call with Vivian while running his race. This is also the race where we discovered that Quinn was, as she put it, consistently consistent with her did not finish as she was recovering from her ankle injury. The fourth and final race brings us to BCS. At this point, we know that unfortunately the banner is out of our reach. Other schools simply have too many runners at the Bantam and Junior levels for us to keep up with, even though we were by far and away running away with the senior level. We do not travel with a full team, but thankfully it's nowhere near as extreme as last year when more than half of our team decided to, you know, be sick and miss the race. But this time, valiant effort with eight runners earning points to end a fun, interesting, and exciting season. Seven of our runners had their best personal race. Everyone walked away with their heads held high, none other than Andrew wearing Justin's medal. If I had to describe this season in just one sentence, I don't think I could. What I will say is that this team came together. They constantly supported each other and cheered each other on. This season was Charlie always somehow running with a smile on her face. This season was Joelle and Adriana always running side by side for the entire race, only to have Adriana turn on the jets in the final seconds to finish ahead of Joelle. This season was Haley and Kate insisting on ending every race in a tie. This season was Sarah discovering her love of torture when she would help me start the sprints. You should have heard that evil laugh as she just constantly told them to go. I was quite impressed. This season was Ari's intense running face and honestly I would try to imitate it but I could do no justice. This season was ZU always running, always walking, I should say, unless he knew we could see him. Then he would conveniently start to run again. This season was Justin's stretching, if we can call it that. Keita hiding his speed up until the last race. This season was Noah deciding to body check Liam during our final practice to have one last chance to finally beat his brother. On to awards for this evening, and I would like to ask all of our following recipients to please wait and come up together, and of course, let's try to please hold the applause. Our first award goes to our natural runner. She continuously challenges herself to better her times and works hard in practice, with many times going above and beyond what we asked. 
with three second place finishes, a senior S for Holly Canna. Another natural born runner, she takes everything we say to heart and never gives anything less than everything she has, both in races and in practice. She is driven by her desire to always do her best and anything less than that is not good enough for her. With three third place finishes and a second place finish, a senior S for Adriana de bien -Sainville. It is only natural that our next award goes, with, goes to Adriana's partner in crime. She was never bothered by Adriana continuously finishing ahead of her, never wanting it to go easy on her. She's an equally talented runner with the drive and work ethic that will make any coach happy. With three fourth place finishes and a third place finish, a senior S to Joelle Benoit. A first year runner for us, this athlete has the talent and all the potential. There must have been something in the water in that family home when they were growing up. He never was discouraged and worked hard to keep up with Liam, who, which no one can keep up with Liam in practice or in race, and always pushed himself to improve. He approached everything with a level of dedication and seriousness that made this an easy decision. With a second place finish and two third place finishes, a senior S to Noah Summon. The Sportsmanship Award is given to probably one of our most dedicated vocal and spirited runners. She has been on the team for two years and while she is not the fastest runner on the team, she always is the first to arrive to practice. She never gives anything less than everything she has. She's constantly cheering on each and every member of her team. We are proud to present the Sportsmanship Award to Haley Wolf. Come on up. We have one last award to give out for tonight. Our last runner will be awarded both a Major S and the MVP trophy. This athlete is the textbook definition of a runner. He always works hard and pushes himself to do more. He never hesitated at the beginning of the year by asking to run at the senior level even though he's of junior age. He's the fastest runner on the team and he finished the season with four first place finishes. Please stand to recognize this year's recipient of the William Green Shields Memorial Trophy for Excellence and Leadership in Cross Country and a Major S, Liam Summon. Next to speak from Senior Boys Soccer, Mr. Chandler. Have to say I'm a little sore tonight, chasing Trophim and you ho around the field today. Thank you for that. Good evening, Spartans. Congratulations to all teams and athletes for a wonderful fall sports season. Special recognition goes to Coach Liverpool and the junior boys for the ETAC League and playoff championships. Way to go. To Coach Carruthers and the Ultimate Frisbee team for their RLCQ championship. Way to go. And to Liam. 
for his cross-country accomplishments. Great job. A few thank yous to Mr. Spurk. Thank you for pushing to get the case tournaments back up and running after a four-year hiatus and your continued support of our soccer program. Thank you. To our Alan Natore, that's Italian for coaching staff. Ms. Guerrera, how did I do? Uh, Mr. Andre Samard, Docky Standage, and manager Chris Leclerc for their sense of humor, patience, willingness to put up with me, and for their devotion to our squad. Thank you, guys. Now on to our season. We had four objectives in September. Number one, win our second annual Stansted Invitational Tournament, and we did. Number two, play in either the gold division, the top eight, or the silver division, top 16 teams of the case tournament. We did, and we played in the silver division. Number three, win the ETAC regular season banner. We came close, very close. It came down to needing to score one goal at home against MVR, and unfortunately, we didn't quite make it, and we finished second. Number four, win the ETAC playoffs. We won our semifinal game against Galt, one nothing, but we lost in the final to one, uh, one nothing to Richmond, which was a really cruel loss. That's all I'll say about that one. Overall, we played 19 games. We won nine, tied five, and lost five. We scored 30 goals and allowed 19. My, se my season highlights included our two best games of the season, both played at Case against traditional powerhouses, Lower Canada College, LCC from Montreal, and St. Andrews College, Gold Division finalists from Toronto. While we lost both games by narrow 2-1 margins, we played out of our skin in these exciting and intense matches and proved we could compete and we were a really decent team. Now, let's meet the team. Emmanuel Gans was our goalkeeper. Manny played 18 of 19 games for a total of 1,260 minutes overall. Manny was solid in goal and gave us every opportunity to win. At the center of defense, the Spartans were led by team captain Chaz Grenier, fifth-year Spartan Maurizio Lopez, six-year, no, Chaz Grenier, yeah, fifth-year Spartan Maurizio Lopez, and up from last year's uh, junior ranks, big Bo Bailey. Anchoring the, back, uh, the fullback positions were ultra-competitive Mason Bayas and Liam Wallace, Stansted College Mayor Emiliano Maciel, Senior, the versatile and reliable Will Towner, who doubled as a forward and everywhere else, and the best header of a ball on the team in Beckett Christensen. In midfield, otherwise known as the engine room, the players are supposed to be loud, authoritative, take charge personalities, but we had four of the most quiet and reserved guys you could imagine. And then there was Jordy. Matteo Parody, Gabriel DeSantis, Ryder Busto, and Santiago Prieto were the strong, silent types who let their play do the talking for them. And again, then there was Jordy. When he wasn't on yellow card duty, Jordan Alunga was the most dominant player in the league and so much fun to watch. Jordan's season was cut short because he accumulated a number of yellow cards. Interestingly, when we went to the case tournament, we played five games in three days, not a yellow card from Jordan. It still irks me to this day that it played out the way it did. Anyway, I digress. Patrolling the wings were some guys who were fleet of foot. That means fast and really good team players too. Luke Delabriere, although he played multiple positions, scored three goals. Nico Robillard with a beauty against Galt, and the lightning fast Shun Hatano played on right wing, while Ricky Fabian and two goal man Jerry O'Regan shared duties on the left side. Robillard, Hatano, and O'Regan produced the goals and assists in our crucial last league game, and it was Fabian with the last minute winning goal in our semi final that got us to the playoff championship match. What a goal, and what a special moment that was! Shout out to the loud and boisterous Varsity Hockey Boys who helped get us over the line. Way to go, fellas.
Our forward line was decimated with injuries this season, and I was never more disappointed than when Freddie Vincent, who came from, like we saw him play in last spring's all-campus day, and he was fantastic. So unfortunately, Freddie played only the Stansted Invitational a couple of league games before his season came to an end with a leg injury. So that is, without question, the biggest regret. So Freddie, I hope your winter sports season goes better than the fall one, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you on the ice. Grade 10 Dynamo, Josh Lippman. Was having himself a heck of a season with four goals before his hamstring popped in our home game against MVR, and that injury sidelined him for Case and the playoffs too. Workhorse Henry Riddle was the lone striker and played monstrous minutes this year up front as our number nine, racking up seven goals. Pretty good numbers for a grade 10 player. Student manager Chris LeClaire was unable to play this year due to injury, but he was a huge help and kept the mood light and bright with his positive attitude and sense of humor. He wanted to make the subs. We wouldn't let him, but he wanted to do that. Hopefully next year we'll see him on the field. I thoroughly loved coaching this team, and I thank you, gentlemen, from the bottom of my heart for the memories. It was a really fun season. Well done to you. I ask that her most sportsmanlike player and senior S winners come up together. Our most sportsmanlike player, this player made an immediate positive impression on me on the first day of tryouts. He introduced himself by shaking my hand and giving me a little bit of a background story that I wasn't quite prepared for, but I truly respected. He was totally vulnerable and was forthcoming. And then he went about working hard, getting to know all of his teammates, and and just being a great kid each and every game and practice that, that he was involved in. He is a positive and fun influence who makes our team dynamic better. At the case tournament, he pulled off two crazy moves that drew the thunderous applause from his teammates and coaching staff. He is a great kid who I hope returns next year. Siway e muy bien, mi amigo. Congratulations, Emiliano Maciel. For their marked improvement from the beginning of the season to the end, their wonderful team before self attitudes, leadership by example, positive contributions, and overall great guys, Senior S awards go to Matteo Parody, Luke Delabriere, Jordan Alunga, and Henry Riddle. Come on up, guys. Tonight we have three major S winners. The first major S goes to one of the strong silent types who is in his first year at Stansted. This guy ran his socks off, played with so much heart and conviction and scored three goals. While only in grade 10, he played like a veteran and was consistently game in, game out, one of our best players. He wore the captain's armband on many occasions. 
He is such a pleasure to coach because he embodies everything our student athletes should be. And most of all, he's a really, really super kid. Congratulations to Gabriel DeSantis. Last year I stood up here and said this about our third major S winner. If there was ever a player you wanted on your team to build around, to lead, to be vocal, <clears throat> to stick his nose, feet, and head into dangerous areas, to consistently show up and play hard each and every day, to lead by example, then you want this guy on your team every day, every year. Today, I stand by these comments more than ever. His heart, his pride, and his determination to represent Stansted College to the best of his ability is unwavering. His technical and tactical skills grew substantially over last year, but it was his undying competitiveness to dominate his opponents and play with such passionate force that truly inspired his teammates and his coaches every time we stepped onto the soccer field. He leaves us with a cavernous hole to fill next year, but we wish him well. We are so proud. Congratulations to our Bobby Moore Most Valuable Player and Major S winner, Chaz Grenier. Senior Girls Soccer, Mr. Van Dyke.
Okay, just a word uh, about uh, when Mr. Spurk opened up, he talked about his 25 year anniversary of having a uh, made dress sweater, pretty big deal. And most of you probably don't know what the pins mean, but he has six pins and those six pins mean he had six opportunities to get a major S and got six major S's in two years. So that's kind of crazy and he was my advising. So I just want to shout out to Mr. Spurk for all of that. All right. Um, um, and also, just thank you to Mr. Spur for everything he does. Thank you to my fellow soccer coaches for all the informal conversations. And the biggest thank you to Coach Kirby, of course, who always gives the best of herself to you girls on the team. Um, I like to save the best for last, so I'll give the awards first. Then I'm going to finish with what I consider the most important part, talking about the team. So first, there are three Senior S Awards plus a Sportsmanship Award. After I talk about all four recipients, they come up together, but do not save your applause till the end. By all means, clap for them when you hear their name. So first Senior S goes to a three-year veteran who has improved steadily since her first year at Senior back in 2021. She's always been fast, she's always been shifty, and she's always had easy power, but she turned a corner this year. She was more aggressive, more purposeful, more intent on trying to beat people, and this new attitude made her a much more dangerous player. A calm, experienced presence on the team who also scored some of the most important clutch goals of the season, senior S2, Gloria Riddle. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's how you clap. There we go. Good. The second, second senior S goes to the linchpin of our defense, The Rock. Dependable, reliable. When you only play with three defenders, your central defender cannot screw up. She has to make every play and every split second decision has to be right. That's pressure. And this second year senior rose to the occasion every time. She led the team in minutes played. She was both the quarterback of the defense and the team's top cheerleader, a player who cherished every second of the season. In fact, that's why I picked this particular Taylor Swift quotes out of all the possible T Swift quotes out there to describe this player and you love the game. Senior S Captain Ava St. Pierre. The third, third Senior S goes to one of the sneakiest, smoothest, most unassuming players I have ever coached. I've lost count of how many times an opponent thinks they're in position to win the ball, only to have Valerie Lynn fake them out of their shoes, break their ankles, and proceed to calmly move the ball. And when I say calm, <laughs> I mean her facial expression never changes. She's like Roger Federer out there. It looks so effortless. She floats. Her feet do all this crazy stuff. Her body shifting everywhere, but her head just stays like this, no matter what she's doing. Like this, her expression while she's feeding people. I've never seen it. Talented, instinctive, and selfless. A silent warrior at left defense who I'm so thankful is returning next year. Senior S, Valerie Lynn. And the Sportsmanship Award. And it goes to this season's most improved player. And it goes to a player who has all the usual stuff you expect. But her contribution to the team can be better described with this one simple story. So, in the last game of the season, the ETAC Finals, Sofia Martinez did not play a single minute of regular time or overtime. Not for anything she'd done wrong, but because the starters at her position just happened to have great games, I didn't want to take them off. So, we end up losing in a shootout. We're obviously crushed, lots of tears. We get together for the season's last huddle. I ask if anyone wants to say a few words. And how does Sophia react after sitting out the entire finals? Is she annoyed? Is she disinterested? Is she angry? No. Instead, with real joy in her voice, she takes the stage and tells her teammates how proud she is of them, how much the season meant to her, and how much her teammates mean to her. If you look up perfect teammate in the dictionary, the English or the Spanish dictionary, you will see Sophia's smiling face, Sportsmanship Award, Sophia Martinez. All four winners, please come up.
the first major S goes to one of the best goalies in Stansted College history, or at least for the 31 years that I've been here. Fearless, great hands, commands her 18-yard box, booming punts. Those are her soccer skills, and if you want to know how good she is, just ask the LCC coach at Case, who told me after the game, close friend of mine, she said that's one of the best goaltender performances I have ever seen. But on top of all that, Maddie Littman is also a leader, a role model, and a selfless teammate. And the Senior Girls Soccer Program has been lucky to have her these past three years. Thank you for everything, Maddie. It's been quite a ride. Major S, Captain Maddie Littman. The, uh, the second, second major S goes to another three-year veteran who told me back in grade 10 that she thought she'd be more useful at midfield. And I'll now admit in front of all of you that she might, she might have been right. Moving Cameron Moore to left outside midfield immediately transformed us from a good offense to a great one that scored just about three goals per game. Her uncommon combination of power, balance, skill, soccer IQ, and an absolute hammer of a left foot meant that we always had the advantage on the left side, leading to constant offense and endless threatening crosses, a dynamic leader, a fierce competitor, Major S, Captain Cameron Moore. The third and final major S goes to a first year senior who I'm pretty sure is the best playmaker that I've ever coached. Her vision, her sense of the flow of the game, she's like a cheat code who sees everything, who processes instantly, and who always makes the right play. The weight and quality of her passes are exquisite, and she makes her teammates better because she's always putting them in the right positions. Later on, I'm going to talk about how great of a passing team we were this year, but that mindset all started with this transcendent player. Her style of play became our style of play. Major S, Natalia Chenier. <laughs> And the last award, final award for me, is the Merle Griffin MVP Trophy for Excellence and Sportsmanship in Girls Soccer. It will be shared this year between the two players most responsible for one of the prettiest, most potent offenses I've ever coached. So the trophy goes to Cameron Moore and Natalia Chenier. Come back up. There is, there is one word that sums up this team for me. One word I'll forever from now on associate with that sharp looking group of athletes right there. And that word is unselfish. Unselfish means putting team needs above your own. It means caring about your teammates' success just as much as your own success. It means the group goal 
is more important than your individual drama and desires. And unselfish is hard, boy. (laughs) Unselfish is not natural. In fact, evolution has made us the most selfish things on the planet. Because looking out for number one is how we humans survived the dinosaurs, beat the Neanderthals, and came on the very tip top of the food chain. Caring solely about one's own well-being kept our ancestors alive, and our brains are still wired that way. When you wake up in the morning, you care about one thing, how you feel. Every single day of your life, you're the star of your own movie, and the rest of us are just extras. That's what thousands and thousands of years of evolution has done to you, to me, to all of us. And that's why this past season was so extraordinary to me, because in an age where being entitled and self-centered has easily become the norm, this team chose to be unselfish. So how were they so unselfish? Two ways. First, it was in how they played the game. This team was an exceptional passing team, one of the top two passing teams in my career. The other one was in 2012. And passing, at its core, means giving up the ball to someone else, not you. So the instant we won the ball, we lifted our head, we looked to move it, send it, drop it back, give and go, switch the play. Not one player held onto the ball too long this season. That only happens when you buy into the system and you don't care about yourself. So how much did we share the ball this season? We scored 49 goals, which is a lot. And it was spread out among 13 players. 13 players. So here's here's a list of players who scored a goal. Carolyn, Jaden, Nat, Emily, Yana, Edith, Cameron, Lana, Addie, Gloria, Jay, Keisha, and Maddie. Maddie, yes, the goalie. And Annie, our other goalie, hit the post versus the BCS. It would have been 14. There's only 11 players on the field at once in soccer. And this season, we had 14 different players score a goal. So that's ridiculous. You cannot share the ball any more than you guys did. And playing unselfishly like that, it produced some very sick goals. Those tic-tac-toe goals remind you that soccer really is, as Mr. Chandler calls it, and I think as Mr. Liverpool referred to it, the beautiful game. Like against Massey, when Keisha worked at the Nat, who sucked in the defense before finding Gloria, found space, had to back to Nat, who one time to three ball to Jay, who knifed it home. So a five-pass buildup. You don't see that on TV that often. Or the one at Richmond where Ava started on her own 18, and five passes later, Emily's on the other side, of the other end of the field on a breakaway. Coaches dream of building play like this, and you guys did it time after time. And while it's true, you do need a lot of talent to play like that. Talent alone is not enough. To play the beautiful game, you need to trust other people as much as you trust yourself. Second reason I think of unselfish when I think of this team is because we had 22 players, and that's been mentioned quite a lot here tonight, and that's the most I've ever kept, not even close. And since you can only dress 18, 18 for games, four had to sit every game, which is a tough situation, but I did not hear one single complaint all season. No whining, no drama. Maybe there were some hard feelings for some of you, but if there were, you did not let it affect the team. You kept it to yourself. You kept it off the field. You accepted the decision. And you came to practice the next day, ready to work your tail off to be on the game roster the next day. I've coached many teams in my career where players become resentful and negative when they don't play as much as they think they should. Their success is more important than team success. And that's natural. Remember, humans are selfish. That's what we do. But not you guys. You guys swallowed your pride, sucked it up, and did not let your personal feelings affect the team. And Coach Kirby and I are incredibly impressed and grateful for that. Finally, I just want to leave you with a few of my favorite memories from the season. Maybe you'll remember them too. From preseason bowling to Addie playing case with bubble wrap and duct tape on her knee to Cameron doing the backstroke in a puddle during a game. From that badass media day photo to Vivian's insanely huge suitcase to arts and crafts and hearts on the last day of practice. From the refs hating us that day in Richmond because we were playing so well to that great day at BCS where everyone played different positions and Maddie scored. From Naya winning donuts for the team to all of us winning that league banner back there and finally to all of us arm in arm after the final whistle blew in the last game of the season, screaming out one last whose house, our house. Coach Kirby and I could not have asked for anything more from you guys, all 22 of you. Thank you for trying so hard. Thank you for being so unselfish. And thank you for such an exceptional season. Have a good night.
Thank you, Mr. Van Dyke. That concludes our Fall Athletic Assembly. Thank you all very much for your attention and comportment, and really thank you again for representing us so well in the arenas and sports fields. Would all major winners please stay behind for photos. That's Banham S, Junior S, Senior S, Sportsmanship, Major S winners, and MVP Trophy winners. Now a reminder that you're to head back to your residence for Quiet House and Packing. Happy River Break to all the events.